Welcome everyone, this is Zonta with Repo Products. Today's video is going to take a look at how to create an egress line in your Revit model for life safety plan purposes. Here I have a Revit model and I've decided to work with creating an egress line where there is some three-dimensionality to it. It isn't something that is just 2D line work or simple 3D model lines drawn down. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit and you can see where I have egress lines here and here over here and over here as well let's go ahead and take a look at this one you also have a tag that I have that displays the length of that egress line segment as well as over here if I select that family I can edit the family so let's study this family a little bit here is the family in 3D. I'll set it to shading so you can see. And if I head over to the plan view, <clears throat> this family that I've created is a line-based family coming from the generic model line-based. If I click the uh, top button right here for family categories and parameters, I'll have a window that pops up. And you can see that it's set for generic models. Um, since we cannot create categories, um, I just decided to work with this one for now. <clears throat> Zooming into the file itself, you can see that there is a length, a line, that's a model line, that's sitting on top of the horizontal plane of the reference line as well. If I look at this in 3D, you can see that green model line that I drew. If I click set over here on the work plane, I can pick a plane. And I can see that the plane is the horizontal plane of that model line. Heading back to the plan view, we can see that I've taken this particular family, which I'll tab into, and edit that family. You will note that this family is also a generic model family. And it's using a simple extrusion and 3D model text. And the 3D model text is just a piece of text that says um, egress line. And you can see it has basic things like the text font size and the style and whatnot. I've gone ahead and taken this particular family, created it as such. And then I also took this extrusion that I created as a kind of like a placement platform for the 3D model text. I've set the visibility of it to only show up in course and no other views. I take this particular family and I have it loaded into as a nested family <clears throat> inside the line-based family, which is back here. That family is then taken and placed initially at the first uh, intersection of the two reference planes. And then I created an array. I arrayed it so that the quantity um, is an integer and I actually parameterize that value. I also parameterized and dimensioned the spacing between the text as well. If I zoom into and take a look at the family types window, which is right here, I'll go ahead and resize this for you. And I'll adjust the column so we can start to see what's going on. you'll notice that we have several parameters that are created and we have the length, the default length, and I have it set as an instance parameter. The quantity of text is that integer for the number of three-dimensional egress line text in the array. And that array number value is dependent upon the length here divided by the maximum distance that I want between the text and divided by two just so that the spacing of the names 3D model text is not so tight, and there isn't so many of them within the line. Uh, I have an egress line length that's set as a reporting parameter. I have the text spacing, which is the length divided by the quantity of the text, that integer number, and then that maximum distance. When it's all said and done, this particular family is loaded into the project environment. I also created some flip um, vertical and control um, horizontal 
controls to see if I can get it to flip, but it didn't work, so I can delete that and delete that over here. And then I can save it and load it back into the project. When it's loaded into the project, it's just a family that you use. And if I head over to this particular family, I can select it. And I'll just type in CS for create similar. It goes directly into the command. And now I can start drawing <clears throat> another egress line. So let's say, for example, I draw it going from here to here, up here. And I have the, um, I'm going to turn the chain feature on. and draw it up to here and then draw it out to here as well and you can see that the line is created and it says egress line and it's repeated as for the tag itself if I select this tag I can edit the tag and it's just a generic model tag that I went and saved and called it an egress line tag I selected <clears throat> the label and if I look at the properties of the label by editing it, you'll see in the edit label window, it's called egress line length. Now this is a shared parameter. And that shared parameter that was created um, was placed inside the family and also inside the project. So if I head back over to the family, so you can see that, select the family, edit the family again, and go into the window for family types, we can see the length is set to 12 feet. And if I select and go into the properties, um, you can see that it's set up that way. Now to work with the shared parameter make it to make sure that it makes sense, if I click shared parameters here, I can head over to the file that I want to use as the shared parameter file. I'll click Browse, and in this case for the recording, um, I have it placed under my temp folder. But you can place it anywhere you want. Once you have that and you browse to it, um, I have one in here. And if you don't see it and you don't have it, you can always create it. So let's go ahead and create one. We want to ensure that we have an egress line length. Let's double check that. Let's look at that family again. Let's look at that label and we want it's called egress line length okay so let's make sure that that is inside all of the families that we need and in the project environment so I'll select the family and go back to shared parameters and we will add a group and in the new parameter group window we'll call it uh, life safety content and in here we'll create that new parameter and <clears throat> excuse me we want to call that uh, egress line length. set it as a length parameter hit OK and it gets created hit OK now that it's there we double check shared parameter egress line length go to properties and it's common discipline is length now that that's finished, we save the file, we load it back into the project environment. And once it's back in the project environment, it can report. So uh, this tag itself will pull that information. So again, if I select this tag and type in CS, I can have a leader, I'll set it as a free end, and I'll place the tag. And it shows. We can also uh, create a schedule. So I have a schedule here called an egress line schedule. And that's just you using the scheduling command, picking generic model, and then um, creating it, calling an egress line. And what I did differently is because you may have a lot of families inside your project environment that are generic model. So I set up the filter rule so that it only gives you the egress line content. So in this situation, I have the filter tab set the egress line length if it's greater than a specific length and it's 
less than a specific length. Once I've done that, it only shows me egress line content. If I didn't have this filtering, let's say I said none here, and hit OK, it's going to give me an entire list schedule of all the 3D model generic family content that I created. So I actually have to use the filtering tool and tell the software that it has to be greater than a specific amount. And depending on maybe um, uh, is less than a certain amount. Depending on your dur jurisdiction and what the rules are for egress line and total length capability, um, you might want to adjust these values. But now that you've done that, it gives you just egress line families, gives you each individual length. And as for totaling out, you just head over to formatting and click calculate totals under egress lines. You could, if you need to, put a conditional formatting in here, uh, and that window will pop up. It looks like this. And we can say if it is, say, perhaps less than a specific value, if it's less than 20 feet, then we can color that cell a specific color just so we can see what egress lines meet that criteria. And in this case, they all do. Um, again, if we go back, we can change that conditional formatting and say if the egress line, oops, if we go is less than um, five feet, then it'll color them or not color them, okay? So that's how you go ahead and go through the process of creating a 3D model um, egress line with 3D thick text so you can really kind of see it in the model. If I head over to, say, the 3D view of this particular Revit project, um, we can start to see it over here because I have it coming out of the building. And it looks like this. Because I also created this family using a nested family with 3D model text, you could, if you need to, uh, tab into that particular family to edit the family and change the actual text. So instead of it saying model text and it being um, the text saying egress line, if I select this and I edit the text, it doesn't have to say egress line. It could be anything we want. You can use this to say maybe let's create a gas line, right? Or an electric line or a piping or whatever kind of text that we want that's in 3D. Once we've made the change, we can load it back into the nested family and overwrite the one that we have. And then we can load that back into the project and overwrite the one that we have. And they'll all change to say gas line. See? So it's kind of a neat way to create um, line work that's in 3D with 3D text that you can change. You can even change the material of the model text as well and kind of get an idea of how to create um, specific line types for life safety work. This is Zonta from Repo Products. Thank you very much for watching.